I used to be a normal teacher and taught high school robotics for 20 years and then in 2018 I became Robot Man and in 2020 the awesome Lego Spike Prime came out and I've been using it ever since. This video focuses on the hub and everything I've learnt, the do's and don'ts, the tips and tricks, the problem solving. So stick around if you want to find out everything I know about the hub. hub has got a power button on the front. That's the main button you need to press at the very start when you want to turn your hub on. You hold it in for about one second or less and then take your finger off and it will light up with the heart on the front. You can also use that um, same button to turn your robot off later on. So you hold it down to turn it off and also you can press that button. If your code's on the hub, you can press that button that will run your code. You often need um, a zero on the front screen. Instead of a heart there, you'll have a, a number for a program. And if your hub's been updated and you press the button, it will run the code. There's some holes on the side as well um, of your hub. They're called ports and they're labeled A, B, C, D, E, F. And they're basically all input and output ports, which means you can plug motors or sensors into any port. So that's pretty cool. There's a Bluetooth button there and you need to press that when you want to connect to your hub. So often you'll spend some time coding on a tablet or computer. And if you want to connect wirelessly, you need to press that Bluetooth button and it will flash and it will beep. It will flash blue on and off in the app. There is a connect button at the top. So what you need to do when you're ready to transfer your code from your device to your robot, you'll need to press connect up there. And when you press that on the screen at the time of making this video, it asks you if you've got green button or a white power button. So tap on the green if your hub's up to date. And what happens is it reminds you to turn your hub on and it reminds you to press that Bluetooth button I showed you. And once you do press the Bluetooth button, you'll see on the screen on the right, a list of all the robots that are turned on will appear there. Now my robots are lab labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So this is robot F. And so if it was turned on and I pressed the Bluetooth button, on my iPad, I'd see Robot F and I'd just press connect. If you see other robots, that's okay, but just connect the one that matches your hub. And when you do connect, you'll see that up the top, there is a green tick inside the connect button. After you've connected, you can download or play or even stop your code from running by pressing the buttons down the bottom right. It doesn't really matter how many hubs you've got. I first started by buying 10, but what you need to do is name them all. So you need to turn your hub on and then on your device, I'm using an iPad here, you tap connect at the top of the screen and then you can go through the process of connecting. When I made this video, you had to choose a green option and then obviously turn your hub on, press Bluetooth. And then there's a screen after you've connect, you tap on that same circle after you've pressed connect, you can tap on that same circle at the top of the screen that's now got a green tick. And when you tap on that, you can press rename at the top of the screen, there's an option to rename the hub. So you type in a name for the actual hub and then the hub will remember that name until you change it again. And now you can see mine's called Robot K, you can call them whatever you like, but they've got to be a unique name. The cool thing about this view is you can see things that are plugged in to your hub. At the moment there's a color sensor there and on this screen you can do things like change uh, what sort of color sensor it is, whether or not it's just a color sensor or a reflected light sensor and that sort of thing. So this view is very handy to see what's plugged into where and you can, for example, plug a motor in and then you'll see that it appears on the screen and in this case it appears in port C when I plug in a motor. I label all my hubs with stickers, so I bought a label maker and I've called my hubs the same as what I've just named on the screen. In fact, I think I labeled them all first. 
and that makes it easier to connect. You should just connect them one at a time when you're naming them. That makes it very easy to name them properly. But a label maker is handy to stick the name on there and that will stay on there for ages. I have all my devices, in this case my iPads, with letters on them as well. So every single iPad is matched with a hub. And if you use the same device with the same hub every time, it saves a lot of mucking around because often if you don't, every time you use a different device, it'll want to update it. So it's a bit annoying. So always use the same device with the same hub. When you turn your hub on, whether you've labeled it or named it or not, uh, you'll notice there is a heart image on the front and that is called the heart mode. And you can use that to run motors and test sensors and all sorts of things without having to code the robot. So you can plug in a motor like this and it will sense that the motor's been plugged in and then you can control it using the arrow keys next to the power button to make it go on or off or move forwards or backwards at different speeds. So I like the heart mode. If you don't want to get the uh, devices out like iPads or computers, you can still make and control robots without having to code them. And that's what the heart mode's for. Every single time I teach using my Lego Spike Prime kits, I get the kids to hand in the main components separately. I put the iPad on top with the hub on top and even motors and sensors on top of the kit. So I can collect up all the hubs, for example, store them away, and then it's really easy for me to charge them all. So this is what it looks like at the end of every lesson and the start of every lesson. And that way we're not spending any time looking for bits and pieces. It took me a few years, but I finally came up with a way to uh, store my hubs and transport my hubs and charge my hubs. So I made this very special tub that allows me to separate all my hubs, have the port, the charging port facing upwards, and then I use my 10 port charger to charge them all. It's pretty cool having a 10 port charger. I thoroughly recommend them. I got mine from uh, Modern Teaching Aids or teaching.com.au. So you can plug her in, charge them all up at once. You'll notice that there's a uh, when they are charged, there is a green light that appears on them. The green light seems to stay there for quite a long time and very rarely goes red. If I charge them up uh, every time that I use them, then I hardly ever see the red light. And you can get a full day of workshops out of one single charge normally. Full day for me would be three 90 minute sessions, but the kids really only use the robots for about half an hour per session. So I guess I get about two hours out of each charge. The battery's interesting. Uh, you should never take it out, I reckon. You should always leave it in because it's a little bit fragile. Those little prongs inside there, if it's they're intact, if there's four pieces of rubber with three holes that line up perfectly with the prongs inside, then yeah, battery's in good condition, um, but they are a little bit fragile. Sometimes robots just have the habit of turning off by themselves if they get shaken up a little bit, and that indicates that you've got a loose battery. And you can just put a little piece of cardboard or paper in the end of the socket that holds the battery, and that will make it a lot tighter fit, and it will make the robot's battery stay in place and hopefully not disconnect. The first time I had a loose battery, I stuck a screwdriver in these prongs and they uh, tend to hold the battery a bit better. But then I realized it was no good. It actually damaged the battery. So don't stick a screwdriver in there. Don't try and adjust those. They're there for a reason and that size. So leave them like that. Otherwise, you can end up uh, damaging your battery. You can see that this battery is in good condition. This one's got like three very distinct holes where the prongs go into, divided by bits of rubber. But if you um, play around with those prongs that are attaching it, then you can end up doing something like this to your battery, which basically kills the battery. You do need to charge your batteries at least once every three months. Uh, more often than that's probably recommended. But lithium batteries need to charge, keep them alive at least once every three months. On the side of the hub, there are some ports where you plug things in. And these can be, get damaged after a while, so your motors and sensors may appear not to work, but because those connectors aren't quite working properly, 
the reason would be that they're probably pushed down too far somehow. You've been a bit rough when you've inserted the um, cables and things. So you can pry them open a little bit with a pin or nail or something, probably a pin, um, to try and connect things a bit better. And also the cables themselves can get a bit grotty and dirty and possibly rusty and I found an electric toothbrush can fix that up. A simple problem that kids have with the hub is they find it very difficult to connect to a plate or frame. Um, sometimes they try and push it down unevenly so they might try and push one end in and then the other end and it just won't go in. But I always emphasize to my kids that if you want to attach the hub, then what you need to do is you need to try and put all four pins in at once. Four pins is enough. You don't need to do heaps of pins. Four pins will hold it in place. And you just got to push it down evenly so every corner goes in at the same time if you can. Nice and slowly. If you do it gently, then it's easy. If you do it rough, then it's hard. And the pins don't even have to go in the corners. The pins could go on the sides like this or anywhere. But I reckon four pins is good, but nice and gentle, and that will work. When you're coding your robot, there's a couple of tricks that you should know about your hub. Uh, whenever you press play down the bottom right, it will run your code. It will send the code to the robot and it will run, but it might take a second or so to run. An alternative is for you to actually click on the number like zero and then download the code. So see the arrow on the bottom right there. You can download your code to your hub. And of course, when it's downloaded, you can press the power button on the hub to run it. And in fact, kids need to be reminded that every time they change their code, they should download it or press play. Otherwise, the hub doesn't know that they've changed it. In fact, they need to tap on the background here. If, if the box is open for them to enter data, then it it won't update. You need to not just update the data, but tap on the white background so it looks clean and then press download or play. If I'm having problems with my hub and I feel like I need to reset it, you can click on these three dots on this screen. When you go to the connection tab, you can see those three dots at the top right and say reset settings. And what that should do is wipe your hub and start again. But if it doesn't work, there might be an error screen that appears on your screen. And if that's the case, then what you need to do, if there's an error like this, just turn your hub off and turn it back on again. Even close the app and reopen the app and just try again. And I've found that works. I'm not 100% sure if this is the case, but it's good to uh, have the internet connected while you are resetting your hub. I believe so go back into your settings make sure you've got Wi-Fi and then it's connected and then reopen the app and reset the settings and then you should find that it does work um, you'll see on the main screen of your app down the bottom right you'll see that it's updating and that's basically resetting the hub with its firmware <laughs> Some people get a bit confused about what version of their Spike app they're using. If on the home screen you click down the bottom right where it says settings, you can see what version your Spike app is. If you feel like you need to update it, go back into the App Store and press update. And so if your button is white on your device, you're probably running an older version of Spike, perhaps Legacy. You might want to update it to the latest version of Spike. Go to the App Store or wherever you get your program and upload it. If you've got a green, if you've got a green button there, then it's updated to the latest firmware. Some people have got problems when they press this Bluetooth button though and nothing seems to be happening. They get to this stage and nothing seems to be coming on. So make sure that your hub is fully charged by having a green light there. Then unplug it and turn it off. Once it's turned off, you need to hold the power button down for more than 10 seconds. Now there's no indicator for the 10 seconds, just kind of guess about 10 seconds. And then after it's been held down for 10 seconds, take your finger off, it'll start flashing. And while it's flashing, press it again and hold it in until you see a red color. If you miss it, just wait until the red comes back and then take your finger off when it's red. Go into your device, press on the green option because you've updated your firmware and then press the Bluetooth button on your hub and hopefully on your screen you will see now that you have the option to connect and just press connect. Now after you do connect you'll notice that 
down the bottom right of your screen, you'll see that uh, it updates a while. It, I've sped this up a little bit, but it takes a while to update, a, a minute or so. And then after it's updated, uh, you'll see now you've got a little green tick on the top of your screen where you connect and you should be right to go. So when you click on the link, which is in the description, it says that uh, you need to use Chrome. So you actually have to plug the hub into a computer. You must use the USB, micro USB cable and plug it into a computer and it's got to have Chrome on it. And also, um, it needs to have, it can't have Windows 10 or 11. So I'm just doing mine on the Mac, but uh, you've got to find a computer that doesn't have Windows 10 or 11, plug it in, open up, the website using the link in the description and uh, follow the instructions from there. It says hold down the connection button and plug in the USB cable. So I've got to hold down the little um, Bluetooth button, plug in the connection cable that you normally use to charge your robot. Um, and you're supposed to wait until it goes multiple colors. Keep holding the connection. Now it's going multiple colors. I've opened the connection window. Okay. And it says Lego Technic Large Hub in DFU mode, so that's cool. I'm going to click on that and press connect. So you can see that on the screen. And then it says start firmware downgrade. So I press start firmware downgrade. And it's going to, on my hub, it's going to reinstall the old Spike 2, I imagine. Firmware. So the Hub OS has been installed. You're now ready to use the Spike Legacy app, which is kind of the, the full version of the older version. Downgrade another Hub or quit. Looks like it's ready to go. You notice that it keeps flashing. Now I've opened up the um, Spike app, but I'm going to turn the Hub off. So open up your Spike app, put your finger on the Hub and turn it off. And then once you're in Spike, you can press the connection tab. Because you're plugged in via USB, I recommend you leave it plugged in or unplug it, plug it back in so that you can connect via USB. And then it should ask you to update the hub again, which is a bit annoying and it does take a long time. So press update and keep it all plugged in. And I've sped this up, but it does take about four or five minutes to actually update. But you just gotta be patient and update it all again. And when this is, is finished, you should be your hub should now be compatible with the legacy app so give your hub a unique name i always name mine like a letter of the alphabet robot k this one is and you should be good to go i've had a couple of problems with my hubs in the past and i've contacted lego support showing the video of what's wrong and they've always been very supportive. They've even replaced a couple of hubs for me. So send them an email with a video of what's wrong and they'll be reasonable if you're being reasonable. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't seen this one, you gotta see this video. If you teach with Spike Prime, you've gotta see this video.